Welcome back, everybody, to episode 20. If you can imagine that, we found a way to do not one or two or three, but we figured out how to do 20 episodes of Confluence World Podcast. And if you remember last week, we talked about, or I say last week, last episode, which now was too long ago than I would even <laughs> like to admit. Um, but what happened was we talked about how important it was getting to that 20 episode threshold because that now places us in the top 1% of all podcasts that ever happened. Congrats. Thank you. Thank oh, I you. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, sweet. There was a tweet that came out uh, just for reference for you where um, I was reading it and it was some guy who's like a social media guru, creator yeah. type guy. And he said, he was like, if you do... Um, three podcast episodes, then you're in the top 90% wow. of all, which is crazy, right? That I mean, three episodes? Like, that. thinking about it, that's not that much. <laughs> no. But then 20 is like, you're in the 99 percentile. Well, congrats. That's, a, that's really cool. Thank you. And also, I'm so glad that we can <laughs> finally do the show. Finally. So, folks, just for a little bit of background, what I've been wanting to do and make a more cohesive and I'll call it um, all-encompassing um, experience of getting to know guests and speaking and building bridges is that my guest today and I sat down, shout out Foster Coffee Company. Great coffee. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. We might have to do a brand deal with Foster. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but we sat down. Gosh, uh, a month ago, maybe a few weeks, three weeks, yeah, something maybe oh, like a month. Yeah, I want to say it was a month, honestly. yeah, for sure. And we sat down and just talked about life and talked about upbringing, talked about faith, and all of the things that we were to be covering on the podcast. And I thought that was super cool, and I'm appreciative of your time yeah. back then, and that we were able to schedule one here today. Now, it's an early morning episode, which is very rare. In fact, we have not done one of these ever before. So a lot of firsts. But another first is that we are changing the scope of what Confluence is and what it looks like and how it applies to the word. And so I would say, like, what happened was I was thinking about after 19 episodes, you know, and I had a long break of, like, I don't know what's coming next. And there was kind of a seed of doubt, a little bit, of like, will something happen? You know, will we keep creating episodes? Or will we become one of those that kind of just falls off the face of the earth? And I said to a friend of mine, shout out Stanton Ramel, Michigan State football, that, dude, you got to help me here. Because <clears throat> Stanton, oh my gosh, like to talk about the work that he does for the kingdom of God, and his ability to stay in tune and be a leader of faith and of football within that locker room. That inspired me. But he also has a platform called Blessings Secured, which is something that he's done with family of his, a couple of siblings and a, a cousin, a family friend as well. And they have put it together where they're talking about similar situations, faith, athletics, community, all these different umbrellas. So I reached out to him and we sat down as well just two weeks ago. And he said, dude, if I can give you any advice, it's to get in the word. And I went, oh my gosh, like, wow, that's a revelation. Let's talk about this and let's form an idea. So folks, that leads us to where we are today, sitting beside Sophia Gasparoni, who's a member of the Michigan State cheer team and has burst onto the scene as a freshman at Michigan State, found a way to get involved in multiple different campus endeavors, and is certainly, as I've been hearing and seeing, growing with her faith, growing in her craft, and there's evidence of that that <laughs> we will reveal here in a couple of minutes. But Sophia, how are you doing this morning? I'm great, I mean, to anyone that knows me knows that I am an early morning person. So this is very, very typical for me. I'm a early riser, but I'm great. I'm excited to do this. Like you said, our conversations at Foster's were so fun. 
So to be able to sit down and like allocate the time is sweet, is really cool. Yeah, I, I love I love the word that you just used, allocate. That's really good. <laughs> Thank for, you. Yeah, 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 for multiple reasons. And I think the one that strikes me right now is like, wow, we are all so busy doing these things, for sure. you know, and being at these places and connecting with these people that for you and I to be able to sit together and, and break this stuff down, it's an allocation of time and resource and and mental capacity For sure. on this fine Saturday morning in April. And I just love the way you said that. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So before we get to it, because folks, we do have a couple of verses. We do have maybe a passage that we'll get into in just a second. But talk to me a little bit about what's happened with Cheer and how things have gone for you this year. And um, the accolade that we didn't mention that we must talk about. Okay, so the accolade was the most improved award, which I was just, I was really taken back by that. I was not really expecting that, but it was obviously awesome. And as I said to my team when I accepted it, I was like, I'm just eternally grateful. I mean, it's only been a year, and the things I've learned from the older girls and guys on the team and my coaches just made me like even say it, it's like so warming to like see and like feel for the next three years because it's like if I could learn this much in one year to I can't wait to look back at four and be like wow but the whole year I mean to look back it's been insane I mean I came in like learning an entirely new position because um I've cheered for a pretty long time but I was always a base so I was like the person holding the girl's foot and like all girl and there's three people under a stunt instead of just one guy because that's co-ed mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when i made the co-ed team i was like okay i need to learn how to be a flyer so going in and ultimately learning and trying to kind of pave my way in a new position has been very difficult <clears throat> but very rewarding mm. and honestly it's it's at times it gets very difficult trying to like learn new things and learn how like I work in the air because I'm still trying to get that like figured out. Sure. But it's been a really fun learning process and I've gone to really enjoy just the the learning curve and learning from the older people on the team. And I think it's been, it's brought a lot of value to me like growing as a person too, I feel like. Mm. Yeah, I think there were quite a few things that you said there that um, are certainly worth mentioning and, and diving deeper into. But one of them that... I really appreciate it. Kind of an overarching lesson is that you were willing to accept your new role yes. and do what you could to, to get better at that. And you talked about the difficulties that were associated. So what I'm curious about with that particularly is like, why is it that you were so willing to jump into a new position? Well, I decided I wanted to really go for it and prepare to try out for a college team. And I have always loved Michigan State, and I was like, I would love to cheer for a school that is a Big Ten atmosphere. I mean, obviously, a game day at a Big Ten university is is not like anything else. And I was like, well, if I'm going to do it, like, I'm going to put my eggs in the basket, I'm going to commit to it, and I'm just going to, you know, do everything I can control and move, from forward, move forward from that. And, I mean, it was – I don't even know, like, what even made me, like, flip that switch mentally. But when I did, I was just all – all in it and all going forward for it and i've never looked back mm. hmm. and then i think also you know we talked about um time management right yeah. and figuring out how to navigate what it is to be on a team and to be doing school because from what i can tell we can get more into this in a little <laughs> bit but uh, the academic program you're in is pretty strenuous and can be demanding for yeah sure. yeah i'm in lyman briggs and it it can be but I mean, it's kind of a dual ended sword because our classes are very small or not very small, but it's it's similar to like a high school size or at least what my high school was. There's like about maybe about 30 people in a lecture and the two L.A.s and a professor. So I think the size and the ratio is what helps, but also makes it harder because if I was learning that content in a huge lecture hall, I don't think I would be nearly as successful just in terms of like me focusing in on a subject. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And I think too, 
as I'm thinking back to it, I was telling this story the other day. I was in a, a lecture hall my, when would that have been? Freshman year um, for an ISS class, which is kind of just whatever. It's yeah. kind of a throwaway <laughs> class. You know, it doesn't pertain to anything. Um, but there's one particularly that I was in that were like, if I remember, 220 people in this class. Wow. And I went, wait a second, that's like crazy. Because I came from a, a relatively small high school um, and just wasn't expecting that. But also during freshman year, it was still kind of the um, COVID era a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so it was during the winter time, it was like January. And there was snow on the ground, ice, making it really difficult. And she, my professor at the time, said, you don't have to come to class. And me being from out of state, being from the West Coast, I was like, I didn't, you know, come this far <laughs> to not go to class. Yeah. So I, point. for sure, right? So I hoofed it across class, or, or no, excuse me, across campus to get to class. And I showed up, and there were seven people in the lecture hall. <laughs> and I went, come on now. But I will say, to your point, that was the most I'd probably ever learned. Because she went through the entirety of the PowerPoint in front of seven people. Yeah. It's like everyone else is behind the curve now. Really? <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, too, another one of the places that I wanted to go is that you've been able to travel recently. Yes. With your team. And so I was hoping you could talk a little bit about what's happened with travel and what it was like to go on the road. Yeah, well, we traveled earlier in the year for Nationals, mm. which was in Florida at the ESPN Worldwide of Sports. And wow. that was really, really fun. That's in Orlando. And I've been there before for all-star competitions, but being there for the college side was completely different and really, really inspiring to like watch and see all this other talent and all these other u like universities. But recently, or most recently, traveling for Women's Big Ten, that was so fun. I mean, unfortunately, we were a little too confident about how far we went. But, you know, who's to say next year we will cross that bridge when we get there? That's right. But Minnesota was really fun. I've never been there before. Um, the Mall of America was super cool. Mm -hmm. The Target Center was really, really awesome as well. Um, and it's a really great venue, a great travel. And it was great to kind of experience like a game on the road because that was my first away game of to travel. And that was super cool. We were only there for a little bit, but we had a great time. Mm. And I know um, one of the things I took away the first time we sat down is that when you're in the cheer team, you are you have more like access to traveling and competing as seniority happens, as you get older, right? Yes. So what are you looking forward to then the next couple of years? What are some of the things that may open up to you as possibilities? Yeah, well, with the Big Ten expanding, um, I am hoping senior year just for like, which it sounds crazy to say like a normal away football game could be UCLA, which is wild. So like my senior year, I would, I would really be excited to go to one of the Cali schools for an away game or even just the other coast and see that. Cause I've never been any, anywhere along there. Cause that's what I kind of look for with traveling is, you know, the opportunity when it presents itself to go somewhere I would never like find myself going to because mm. that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking about Minnesota I'm like when would I ever like I don't know when I would be going here again so this is so sweet but that and I hope sometime in the next three years to be there for when Izzo makes a longer tournament Ooh, run yeah that would be really cool to be in a final four travel that'd be really awesome but I mean I just kind of taking it as it comes because sometimes depending on the teams you never know how much travel you'll get depending how they do, but I'm just excited. I mean, it was even seeing my teammates go to North Carolina was sweet. They said that was awesome. So just kind of stopping and enjoying everything as it as it's arriving. Mm. Yeah, no, I love that. And you're so right about the expansion. In fact, it's coming earlier than we might even imagine. I know. <laughs> like this year, right, we're in 2024. We're in April. The first time that we are headed on the way to one of these schools, is October 5th, where we're headed to Eugene, Oregon, which I'm stoked for because yeah. that's a home game. I'm going. I'm, I will hope to be working in some capacity there. But shout out, even though I don't want to do this, the <laughs> Oregon Ducks. 
uh, because it's going to be a raucous environment and it's going to be a great thing. Yeah. But Sophia, what I am dying to know, <laughs> I am just like over the moon. I need to hear this. Really? <laughs> is, absolutely. Is when is it that you knew that you wanted to pursue cheer at a higher level? I would say um, it was about the fall. I would say the gap between when the high school football season ends and our like cheer competitive season starts. Um, I was I remember just like always like thinking about it, but never really coming to a realization that like oh like, I gotta like get going if that's what I want to do. And I just remember one of my coaches asking me like really plainly, hey like. You know, would you consider like trying out for a college team or like cheering in college? And I just didn't even know what to say. Like I was like, I don't know. And then I went home, was researching a bunch, and then I was like, okay, no, I I want to do this. And then I mean, like I said earlier, once I kind of get my mind on something, it's like full speed ahead. And then, I mean, it's just been a lot of hard work, but a lot of great things to earn since then. Hmm. Yeah, certainly, and I think. What you talked about with picking up the pace, right, and starting to work on the craft uh, and pursue it, even though you may have been at the time a little bit behind in um, searching for the next level, yeah. that to me feels like a time where your faith would come in yes. and be tested. For sure. So in that case, it's like, where does your faith come from? And how have you seen, or, or where did you start to see it um, and your, your belief in Christ make an impact? Well, when I grew up, my parents were very intuitive. And like to even look back at it now, and I'm obviously not even that old to say that, like, wow, well, I can look back. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But both my parents grew up very religious. And I think when my brother and I were to a certain age, still really young, my mom and dad would be like, you know what? we believe this, but we want you guys to independently, like find what you believe in. Cause I, don't, I think maybe in the fact that they were pushed so much on religion that they were trying to um, kind of give us our freedom with it. Sure. In kind of a not like really overarching sense, still kind of pushing us to follow some certain things the same, obviously. And I feel like I never really understood the impact or was like really immersed especially because the older I got, the more traveling we did with like cheer and basketball for him. And then going into this point in my end of my junior year and then senior year when this started to like really come about um, and then college admissions too. Sure. I remember just being so anxious and just like uncertain is really the best word to put it because there would be times of like nerve, anxiety, all this, et cetera. But when it was like uncertainty, I would just be like, I don't really know like what to even place like my hope in. And then that's kind of where I like went back to just finding like the verses, being more in tune with just my walk with God. And that's when I was like, my thing is, I know that there are great things to come, but I want to make sure I'm putting my faith in something that is true and like is that same like standard. And I just found myself honestly like one day just reading verses in the Bible and getting back into it, or not even back into it, but kind of a new branch of it as like an older part of myself and a more mature part of myself. And then just on days when things were maybe not going the best or I was really uncertain, just find myself diving back in there and, you know, waking up in the morning. I'm, I'm a morning person. I One of my favorite parts of the day is being up and no one's else, no one else is awake. It's quiet, it's still, I'm reading my devotional, I'm praying. And I think that's like one of my favorite parts and ways to start my day. Mm. And I think implementing that a little over a year ago to today has just been one of the things that's kind of held me down and been like my anchor. Mm. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think the way you phrase that of being an anchor is just, is so good because we talk about Christ being the rock, right? Or yeah. the foundation. And any of these terms of like steadfast and unending and eternal, right? It all kind of flows in that same vein of like, this is something that doesn't change. And I love what you said about that. Thank you. <laughs> of course, yeah. But um, one of the things that I asked of Sophia folks is to bring, whether it be a verse or a passage. And so we did that. 
because we had to, right? We could not resist. And I'll let you kind of, you know, go over it just a little bit um, in terms of kind of why it makes an impact for you. But I'll introduce it as from Ecclesiastes, we are going to go into um, 11 verse 4. And so that's kind of how we'll lead things through. But before we get there, what are some of the things that you have um, gleaned from reading this this word right here? And, and um, how have you seen it impact your life and the way you go about things? Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good question. Um, when I first read it and when I first kind of came about it, I know we spoke about this earlier, it was almost like so random, but so fitting and like perfect for the moment that when I saw it and I like fully digested it, I was just like, wow, like this is, this is God like speaking through to me because I am so much of a person where sometimes I try to control what's not able to be controlled. Mm. And it took me so many like lessons and instances to realize that controlling the uncontrollable just isn't attainable and letting things go and letting things to God is really the best thing you can do. And I feel like reading that I was able to see it in a different way to where I'm like, wait, maybe that's what I'm doing wrong and relate to it in a way that kind of changed my mindset and gave me like a, a new shift in mentality. And I think that's kind of why I always lean back on it is because when I notice myself maybe thinking something too much or having a bad day, I'm like, no, you can't control what you can't control. Like I can only control how I feel. I can't place that on something else. And I think that's just why it's so so like perfect for whenever I, it needs to be needed. Mm. So let's get right into it. And yes. I'll, I'll just, I'll read over it really quickly, folks, for y'all. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. And when I was preparing for the show and, and thinking about kind of what to, what to say about this chapter of 11, which really like the header here is cast your bread upon the waters and so verse one it says cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days now it was super interesting to me because i was like well when i hear the the phrase cast your bread upon the waters the imagery that I went to in my head, and I, I saw the <laughs> smile there. I know where we're headed to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a great conversation. Uh, the imagery that I built in my mind was throwing literal loaves of bread out to ducks on a pond, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I find it funny because when you do that, ducks are so easy, easily like pushed to kind of flock to the bread and try and eat all of it and, you know, be territorial about it and fight over it. But before we go even further, <laughs> I know that you have a story about that because yes. I mentioned that and I just saw you, you perk up and go, wait a second. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny you say territorial because that's what I'm thinking maybe they were being territorial is because um, where I live, there's like a little park, like Maysecker Park it's called. And I would just go a lot of the time, even recently in the summer when I'm just walking around and I'm like, I'll feed the ducks. And I was probably nine or 10, just hating the bread. And I was going to rip it. And I still had it like kind of spread out forward. And the duck was trying to grab it and bit my finger instead of the bread. And I was just like, ow. <laughs> but maybe that's why they were being so territorial. And I was just like, wait, no, I have your bread, but not, not my finger. Wow. And that's just so funny. I, it always comes back to me. I forget it, and then it always comes back, that memory. <laughs> and I think, you know, that's, that's interesting just how metaphorical that is. Yeah. Because if we're speaking about what the bread is, right, the bread is the Word of God. Yeah. And so it's like us as His followers, what we cannot do is be territorial. We need to be humble enough to go to it and receive it, but then we need to share it. Yeah. Like it's incumbent upon us to go and, and make disciples of all nations, right? That's the great commandment. Yeah. And so it's illustrative of like, dang it, you know, we can't be a duck. We can't go and bite fingers. Like there's no way. There's no yeah. way about that. Yeah, I think that's a really beautiful illustration, honestly. 
kind of a one, kind of one where it's a bit of a funny story, but it does make you think. It makes you ponder a little. But I really like the way you said that. It's very, very true. Mm. And then he who observes, just thinking back to, to the subject of where we're at, is in verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. And I think you talked about um, the focusing on the things that you can't control. Yeah. And I was wondering, thinking back to the year that you've been in college so far, because, shoot, I know we're almost done with yeah. the year. What, like it's crazy. It is. But over the course of that year, have you found yourself looking at the wrong thing or, or holding this thing over here in higher regard than maybe something that uh, you were missing out on? Honestly, and I hope I answer this question in the, the right context, yeah, yeah. but I feel like I've done a very good job or to my knowledge, a good job of trying to keep <clears throat> just my focus in the right direction, like what you're saying. I mean, I would say and put a lot of my acknowledgement to my teammates too, because we have our weekly Bible study and first semester, I got to go to Salt a lot. And I've got to go to AIA more this semester too. And just kind of having those times a week where if there is something that I can kind of place that doubt or that like worry into God instead of sitting there and kind of letting it fall on myself instead. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if anything this year, that's what I've done a lot and worked on a lot to be better at is placing that into God and finding more time for God. And I think that's kind of, Something I would say I'm very proud of from this year is because I've been very constant with that. And I think it's been very beneficial. I mean, the things that I've earned, the people I've gotten to talk to, and it's been all rooted back to, well, this is like a God-given opportunity. This is all that God made. Mm. So I think that's one of the greatest things I could take away from the year. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. That was <laughs> awesome. Because I think one of the, the key concepts that I have – uh, maybe not learn, but it's been reiterated to me this year specifically is that when you dive into the word, like the more times that you're in it and that you're praying and that you're meditating on it, that's better. And like maybe even not better, but more repetition leads to greater renewal of the mind. Right. Yeah. And being able to keep reminding yourself of all that's laid out here stands on a higher ground than what I'm concerned about. This sure. test or, or this competition or this struggle with my friend or, you know, whatever that might be. Not to invalidate anything that, that comes about during the course of a year, but it's like, yeah. dang it, this, this yeah. is greater. Agreed. So you, you touched on having been a part of um, things like AIA. And I was wondering, it's like, what is it like in, in your eyes and how would you kind of describe having that community here at, at school and being able to have that touch point of yeah. connecting with people? Well, honestly, I think it's great. I mean, one of the things I wish I allocated again to say more time was being able to go to it more mm. because with that being said of me trying to really prioritize my craft and cheer is when there are times to like open stunt or stunt with some of the veteran guys who are able to teach those days where they're open are Tuesdays or and or Thursdays. So I've kind of had to place the priority of things over another. And I've been AIA, but not as much as I would really wanted to this semester per se. But actually two weeks ago, we did a cheer and dance takeover oh. and I was able to MC. And I thought that was the funnest thing ever. I was really nervous, actually, because I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to like have prepared. <laughs> but I mean, what I even said to the whole table and like everyone that was there that night is it's such a great community to just fall into and fall in love with because we're all here for the same purpose. We all want to worship God. We all want to read the word and kind of relate it in an unspoken sense that we all, sure, we might not do the same sports or relate to the same struggles, but when you're having a maybe a bad practice, a bad game, a bad competition, whatever it is, you're able to take the things you learn in AIA, the people that you talk to, the kind of takeaways, and bring that to your next practice or your next bad day or even your next great day. Yes. And I think that's kind of what I wanted to reiterate, even speaking. And I thought that was amazing because 
I don't think I'm like the world's greatest public speaker. I mean, I can talk to people, but I was like, I'm just going to go up here and talk as if we're all having an individual conversation. And the amount of like support and people that came up to me and were like, you were great. Like you spoke like so well versed. I just thought like, honestly, I was like, that's just like God speaking through me because I was so nervous. But then I held the mic and I started speaking and I was like, this is so like, so like at ease. And I thought that was really cool. I mean, to this day, like, even looking back like that night when I got back, I was like, wow, like, that was like thrilling. That was so fun. And but I really love AIA and the staff is great. Shout out Lauren. She is very close to cheer. And kind of, I got very close with her through a girl on my team, Grace. And I think she's been a great part of like growing in my faith, too. And she's just a great person. Mm hmm. Shout outs all around. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Really. I love what you just said. And I think, too, is like what you mentioned is is incredibly important of like, dang it, if you make the effort to be with God and to yeah. confide in him, like the response is going to be resounding. Like people are going to take notice yeah. and change is going to come. Right. And so I loved hearing that they uh, whoever was at that event were were quick to say to you like well done like yeah. it was awesome to hear you you spoke eloquently and i also wanted to share with you just on a more personal level as we're sitting here right now i'm like what i can't imagine you not being a good public speaker <laughs> seriously i love the way you're responding to me thank you yeah. i mean it's just one of those things where i'm never I guess in a position maybe to like be speaking in sure. front of a lot of people sure. but I'm never like not gonna do it I'm like I wouldn't back away from like presenting you know for like a class mm. but mm -hmm. it was one of those things where I was like I guess I haven't spoken in front of people in like a room in a setting in so long to where when I did it I was like whoa I forgot that like this is my thing like I love doing it mm. um, mm -hmm. but yeah it was it was super cool it was uh, definitely a highlight one of the top five highlights from this semester for sure you know, I, oh man, that's really good. That, that's really good because when I heard you say that, I couldn't help but think that's one of your gifts. That's one of the things that has been handed to you by God wow. and has said, Beautifully put. gosh, dang it, you need to run with this. You need to figure out ways to involve yourself. And I'm inspired by the fact that you've been able to do that and will continue to, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It did make me like think about it when I got back. I was like, gosh, how do I like incorporate this into some sort of next step thing? Yeah. So that's like my next little down the line. For sure. Looking forward per se. <laughs> For sure. So on top of that gift, which we just covered, and figuring out how to steward that well and share the gift with others, what are some of the things that you feel like have been placed in your life for that same sense of like, this is a gift, this is a skill I have, this is something I can use for the betterment of people's understanding of who God is? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, honestly, it kind of goes back to improvement because even one of the things that I always stem back to, that's per se not, one of the things that I really, really believe in outside of just like my relationship with God is this little like it's almost something you would see in like a cute tchotchke store of like two little um, japanese symbols and it's called kaizen mm. and it's the mm -hmm. philosophy of improvement and i think that is something that kind of is what i could say maybe a prolonging gift is for just myself as a person is i'm always willing to learn new things mm. i mean school obviously is in and of itself but just kind of always taking something new out of every day and finding a way to make maybe not like the best out of it once, but a lifestyle out of it. And like, if I'm learning something today, how do I apply that to not tomorrow, but like weeks from now, months from now. And I think that's kind of why I would say it's a gift because I'm always up to learn new things, to try new things. And I think that's kind of what gives me a little bit of an edge as a person, but also an athlete on my team. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think like that's really good and something I, I wanted to touch on because you're part of a team that's rather large. Yeah. I mean, there are <laughs> quite a few athletes uh, in and around what you do. And so I was wondering is like, what is the culture like on your team and how well connected are all of you? And is there any conversation around faith? What does that all look like? Yeah. So the culture of the team it's a fairly large team. We have, I would say, 
18 or 19 girls and then a little over like maybe 20 or 21 guys so mm. it's, it's pretty large but pretty similar ratio mm -hmm. but in i would say another shout out to my teammate nathan who spoke this so beautifully is you know you might it's kind of like coming to college and you're like oh i know who my friends are i know all i know all these things i want and i already have mm. but then we step on this team we were part of this amazing program and you find that like it's the complete opposite but in a great way you find like your family your teammates and you find like this new great group of individuals that who are we're all so different but we just click instantly and i think that's a great part of the culture of our team is that we all bring different things and we all have so many similarities but we come together so great mm. so <clears throat> hmm. that's really good that's really good and i know like it's interesting because this year it seems to me like you all have come together built a ton of momentum yeah going into next year and so in that right before we head out of here because i know we're not pressed for time but you know we're trying to keep it a little bit shorter <laughs> a little bit more concise is what are some of the things that you're looking forward to and will be up to over the summer and then even Further than that, what are some of the things that you desire to get out of the next couple of years of college? For sure. I mean, the summer, definitely. <clears throat> I'm like, something's stuck in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, the summer, probably taking some time to relax. I could probably do more of that. Mm -hmm. And spending time with my family. Um, my brother's going to Europe all summer, so kind of try to see him and hang out with him a little bit before he leaves, even though I see him once a week. So I guess I do see him enough. Too. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> but you could always relish with the people you love more and kind of just taking time to enjoy where my feet are at. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. That's definitely one. And I think just kind of stay steady on my route of what I want and what I want to reach. And going into next year, definitely that same kind of goal of just like overarching like working for the goals that are necessary and um, at least cheer wise, keep pushing for new skills, pushing to learn more. Cause that's the beauty of like stunting is you could always learn a new skill. You could always try a new stunt and kind of keep being curious and open-minded with that and with school. Cause obviously as the years go on, it'll get harder, but to kind of keep the curiosity that, you know, if it gets hard, I'm still learning. Mm. It's, still for a, it's still for a purpose and just kind of keep that open mindset. And you still got somewhere to turn to. Yes. Right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. When in doubt, 11 4. That's my motto. <laughs> wow. That was really good. I love hearing that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And um, I think what kind of just hit me over the head, actually, like a mallet in real time. I really? went, wait a second. Oh, my gosh. I didn't put that together until this moment. Is that, and forgive me, because I may yeah. be behind the curve. You're good. But I was hearing you speak just now and said to myself, wait, this is a girl who holds tremendous value on improvement and has integrated a symbol for it and is like passionate about, you know, learning new skills. And then one most improved on your team. <laughs> that just connected with me. I like yeah. didn't even think about that. I, I, I was thinking about that the other day and I'm like, well, you can't say I'm not consistent because I'll... All loose ends really tie together in a in a very pretty bow. Yeah. For lack of better words, because I'm a cheerleader. So it's like the bow does fit perfect, I guess. That's right. That's right. Wow. Oh my goodness. Folks, to me, when I hear that, I'm like, shoot, if there is something that you are uh, passionate about or have kind of a, a phrase or something that is like motivating or or something to describe how you go about your business. This is proof right here. Like <laughs> you use that to your advantage because the question becomes, what do you do with it? Like, do you just look or do you aim to reap and sow, right? And I was like so happy to have finally connected that and make sense of that and also to be listening to you. Thank so. you. Thank you for yeah. being here. This was so fun. I'm so happy we got to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's been a long time coming, and I'm like very grateful that we were able to put it together. Yeah. And I'm really excited to keep following along on the journey. 
Yeah, me as well. I can't wait to see where this goes. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. But that's it for us on Confluence World Podcast. Episode 20 with Sophia Gasparoni from Michigan State Cheer. We're on a quest, folks, to figure out a way to represent each athletic team and as many different clubs as we can do and really just create a robust environment to talk about the word and to break down matters of life, what's happening in other people's lives, and how they all connect. And I love what we're able to do today. And I think that this little endeavor we're going on is going to be really good at. So yeah. I'm excited for the direction. And thank you again. Thank you. Peace, everybody. <laughs>